so we are starting our governance committee. <laughs> we have our quorum, and so we're going to start right on time. We're waiting for one more member that should show up at some point. But this is the meeting of the Governance Organization Legislation Committee on September 25th, 2019. Uh, called to order at 1030, a quorum is present, and we are recording this. Um, the first item of business is discussion on town council policy on zoning bylaw hearings. Um, ad zoning bylaw hearings, so advising on designating a committee or the whole council for simultaneous hearings under Chapter 40A, Section 5. So in our packet is Chapter 40A, Section 5, so people could read what that says. Um, but basically what it says is that no zoning ordinance or bylaw or amendment thereto shall be adopted until the planning board in a city or town and the city council or a committee designated or appointed for the purpose by said council has each held a public hearing thereon together or separately at which interested persons shall be given an opportunity to be heard. That's straight out of chapter, MGL chapter 40A section five. We were, the council referred to GOL, the question of do we want to designate a committee um, or appointed for the purpose by the council? And do we want any recommendations? You know, so do, do we recommend designating a committee or not, um, having it the full council? Or, and also, do we recommend any attempt on policy on whether those hearings shall be held together or separately? So those are the two questions that are up for our discussion today in order to send back to the council a potential recommendation for adoption. Thoughts? And I'm gonna call on Steve first because I'm sure he has thoughts having been a member of the planning board. Um, yeah, let me gather my thoughts and if you wouldn't mind asking uh, Council Ryan. Yes. Ryan has no thoughts. <laughs> Councilor Ryan has no thoughts because he's taking minutes. Um, <laughs> but, so I would actually defer to the chair for the moment to get us started, um, if she's willing. Or we can uh, go to the next item. So I, I'm willing to get started. I, I think on question number two, I outlined two questions. Here is our other member. Um, question number two was simultaneous or separate, right? Yes. Simultaneous or separate. My recommendation would be simultaneous. The better efficiencies we can have on these in terms of publishing and non-publishing and, and town staff work that has to show up to all of these, to me, the, the better. And so I think we can each learn from each other if we hold those hearings together than if we're holding them separately. So that's my, my absolute first word to, update you, we are on our first item of business, which is zoning hearings and whether we want to recommend two questions, a separate uh, council committee or the full council to do the city, the town council part of the hearing, and then whether we want to recommend simultaneous with the zoning committee, the planning board and zoning hearings when they hold them, or whether we want to hold a separate hearing, separate from when the zoning hearing, the zoning side holds it, the permit granting authority holds it. And Steve wanted to think George had no th feelings um, at this point, and I said, at least for question two, simultaneous. Held them together. Yeah, so for, I can speak. Uh, yep. for, for, question, for question two, uh, to me, it's a no-brainer simultaneous. Um, it, it, as I think you were saying as I walked in, it's more efficient. Um, it's less burden on staff time. It's also cheaper for the town. Uh, we have to publish a legal notice for any of those hearings, and so those aren't cheap. Um, so either we have to publish legal notices for a town council hearing and a planning board hearing, or we can publish the legal notice for a joint hearing. So it, it also, uh, I think, is a financial incentive to combine them as well. Steve. Um, on paper, it seems to me to make sense to do them at the same time. There are definitely scenarios where questions are asked that need time to, you know, sort of percolate. Like there might be concerns about blank. And then those questions could be responded to at a, if there was a, if we did it in order, first planning board, then town council, 
if there were concerns brought up at the planning board that were addressable, then those could be addressed at the next level, which would be the town council. Mm. But I'm not so sure, you know, I can't think of perfect examples right now, but that definitely happened between, in the old way, where it went from planning board then to select board. But I don't think it can be adjusted because it has to be the same, you know, the same measure that's before both, but it can be, uh, it can help frame the questions. But we could always extend a public hearing also. So I think that we should start off always doing them simultaneously. George, you don't have anything to add, Evan? So, uh, so I think my position is pretty firm on that second question. The first question, uh, I'm not. I'm a little less firm on. Uh, my my leaning is that since CRC is the committee charged with making recommendations regarding zoning changes, uh, it makes sense. Uh, that the public that to delegate that the town council public forum to CRC and for it to be a joint CRC planning board uh, forum that of course any counselor could attend. Um, I think that also I, I wouldn't want to have I wouldn't want to force planning board to show up in full on a Monday night, um, but also. It's very difficult to get a full council meeting on a night that's not a Monday night. Um, somehow we did it last week, but um, so so to me, I, I would probably lean towards uh, CRC being in charge of it, but could be convinced otherwise. George or Steve, any thoughts on that question? No, Steve, you sat on the planning board. When we had a town form of government, was the planning board the only body required to have a hearing on, on these yes. things? Okay, so. so that's by state law, that yeah. the planning board is that's the only body like. that has to have a public hearing. And then the legislative, then it goes to the legislative yeah. body, their town meeting. So the select board, I don't remember what the select board's actual role was. That Well, they simply made a recommendation, yes or no. But they didn't have to hold the hearing. They didn't have to yeah. hold And George, you don't have any thoughts? I yeah, have oh, you I, do have, yeah. Well, I have a question. I have a question about if we do have it referred to CRC, Evan pointed out that, of course, counselors can be present but help me here with the rules. Um, can we participate uh, directly or are we in the audience and can only speak um, during public comments? What is our status? What is the status of counselors who are present at this uh, suggested CRC meeting who are not actually members of CRC? Um, I think if it's not called as a council meeting, it would be to participate only as the public is allowed to participate. Right. But I'm there could be a dual meeting called in case more than just CRC say would show up. Um, and so that it becomes a meeting of the council too. Um, I, I, given that this is state law, I think we'd need some sort of consultation if we're looking at recommending CRC be the body of the council that holds these hearings, some sort of opinion on could the council call sort of a special session in case more than CRC shows up so that everyone can participate in the hearing or not? Um, if that's a question we want answered, we could defer any recommendation we have on this item until we get a response to that.
George. Um, I guess my only thought is that, that zoning is something where um, probably just about every counselor will have thoughts on the matter. And, um, but if I understand this process correctly, um, even if one is simply present at the CRC meeting um, and can't directly participate, though you could speak at public comment if you wish, um, you will obviously have a chance um, when the full council deals with this. So y y your voice is still will be heard and you can ask questions. Um, but I guess the attractiveness of the CRC, um, the planning board would be present at that as well? No, it would just yes. Be, they would be. So it would be CRC and planning board. Um, so again, that's uh, you know, an opportunity for one to engage them directly. That would not happen, it sounds like, um, when it goes before the full council. Um, it would just be the council um, deliberating and the planning board would not be present officially at least. So if one had questions or wanted to engage in some kind of back and forth, um, it would have to happen at the CRC meeting level unless we um, made this, uh, unless we didn't refer it to CRC but simply had it as a uh, council meeting with the planning board together, in other words, everyone together, um, right? Yeah. So I'm just wondering how councilors' voices can be heard um, on these matters when the planning board is actually present to um, engage and discuss. And at the moment, it sounds like it would only be um, at the CRC planning board meeting. Evan. So I mean, I think I think I don't want to overthink this too much. I think it's it's possible to say the authority uh, to or authority or responsibility to hold the public hearing lies in CRC. They coordinate with planning board to have a joint hearing. But just as our president has done on multiple occasions, it could be also called as a full council meeting just in case. Um, so we just had this with JC, that meet, the joint meeting. That was a joint JCPC finance committee meeting. So it's a council committee and JCPC, um, but it was also called as a full council committee meeting so that those of us who showed up could also participate. We've done this a, a few times. Um, why, I, there are several reasons I'd rather have it lie with CRC. One is just that we had, uh, we have put in, CR, in CRC's charge zoning as, as sort of the matter that they uh, deal with and so it seems to make sense. But the other thing is that, and please correct me if I'm wrong, if we, if, if we want it to be, let's say we, want, we don't want to change, we don't want to make planning board have a separate night for their meeting. So we want it to be part of planning board's existing meeting. Um, then for it to be also the town council, if it was a full town council thing and we didn't want to have it on a town council night, uh, we would need to ensure that we have a quorum of the council present. And I don't, you know, I'm thinking in terms of the, um, what we just did, um, the repeal and replace of the zoning bylaws, that was pretty minor, it was non-controversial. Um, maybe if that hadn't been on a council night, we wouldn't have had a quorum of the count, seven councilors present for that. Um, I think it, it just it makes it a little bit easier if it's just CRC because we just need a quorum of CRC present in order to say that we held the public hearing. Um, and as, as you noted, that's not the only time the council would have opportunities to ask questions. I mean, it would have to be read two times in front of the council. I assume at a minimum the members of the zoning subcommittee would be present at those council meetings. Um, but I think in many ways the this is a new thing that we have to deal with. As Steve mentioned, we didn't, we used to just have to have the planning board hearings, this is a new thing, um, and I think this is just a way of making it easier and more efficient in some ways so we can check that box. The hearing in many ways is for the public and less so uh, for us as counselors, and so I, that's where I'm leaning more towards CRC, but I think your points are also well taken. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts, Steve? Is this something we think we can get to a vote today on um, for a recommendation to the council? I, I'm hearing, I, I'm seeing people nodding their heads, so I guess I'm looking for a motion. It sounds like that motion might be a mo what? <laughs> I, I didn't hear what you said. I, I didn't hear you, so I just Oh, Pat could not make it today. 
she had back to backs and she just couldn't stay. Um, a motion to recommend, I, I write as I think of these, that the council designate the CRC committee, I guess C, the second C is committee. Um, what is it? Designate the CRC um, as the committee. Uh, should we just quote? I mean, it's and the city council or a committee designated to a designated for the purpose by said council. Um, I guess be that the council designate the CRC committee as the committee to hold public hearings under Chapter 40A, Section 5. So it's under MGL Chapter 40A, Section 5. Um, Forty A, Forty A, um, and uh, further. So that's one, and then f further recommend that CRC attempt to hold those hearings together with the planning board. Could you explain I said, attempt? I got a better word. <laughs> that, that CRC hold those hearings. Okay, that's fine. That CRC hold those hearings together with the planning board. So I'll read that again. So it's a motion to recommend that the council designate the CRC, com the CRC as the committee to hold public hearings under MGL Chapter 40A, Section 5, further to recommend that CRC hold those hearings together with the planning board. I guess I'll make that motion. Second it. George seconds. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. It is 4-0 with one absent. That moves us on, we're almost on time here, to a discussion and of and vote on proposed resolution supporting an act establishing Medicare for all in Massachusetts. Um, that can be found in the packet. Um, So this is a, I'm gonna give a little bit of history right here. I am not sure when this is coming before the council at all. I do not know if this is the actual last wording. Um, but it was requested that we make a recommendation now so that it can be heard by us before it comes to the council since the sponsors are not sure exactly when they're, they're going to bring it and so that it would at least have some sort of hearing from us. Um, so there is a document in your folder that shows it, it may change. Um, are there any thoughts on clarity, consistency and actionability on this one?
So from a while ago when this was on the agenda, I just pulled up some of my email. Um, Councillor Steinberg had emailed me with some questions, um, some of which are not necessarily in our purview, but I'm going to read them. It's an old email, so I don't know if any of them do. Um, concerns include that the resolution places councillors in the middle of a divisive democratic politics, um, that if it's about possible state legislation, it could ask us to support something for emotional reasons without considering costs and consequences. Um, uh, it could have bad consequences for Amherst since it could suck up taxes and affect the state's ability to provide local aid. State taxes cannot be increased without a constitutional amendment on the flat tax. And if it supports legislation, um, Councillor Steinberg will want to hear from the MMA first. So I think this is part of why we have not seen it in front of the council and why it's been delayed because I think the supporters that want us to adopt it are getting some of those cost estimates. Um, but I thought I would bring them up as things I had heard um, for that. And then I, I had one question related to, and I know I emailed Pat about this. Um, the last therefore, or whereas, the now therefore be it resolved, doesn't require actually sending the resolution off to anyone. And so I had sent Pat a while ago language that I recommended. She's been the one that is actually corresponding with the sponsors. Um, and I've actually talked to one of the sponsors in the past and, and suggested it to them that this language include the typical language, I think the Roe Act had it, that was passed at, at the council um, and others when we're dealing with state laws that it gets sent, the resolution gets sent off to the sponsors of the House and Senate bills, our rep and senator, the governor, all of that, because we can pass it, but if we don't do anything with it, no one knows. And so I would recommend anything related to this as a GOL for consistency purposes, insert that, that sort of line about, and upon passage, send the clerk of the council sends a copy to, and then the list, the appropriate list. Any other thoughts? George. Since the uh, sponsors are not here, and there seem to be issues, a uh, number of issues with this, um, I wonder if we can just postpone this for another date and deal with it when we have people present who can answer questions we might have. And it seems like we're also looking for more information. Um, and the sponsors are looking for more information. So my thought is um, we probably shouldn't to deal with this until we feel like they're actually ready to deal with it. Um, we shouldn't spend our time until they have um, their act together and they're um, uh, either communicated to us that, that this is the final version or they're actually present for us to actually talk to them about it. Does everyone agree with that? I can get in touch with the sponsors. Evan? Given our uh, impending rule change mm -hmm. that this committee voted on, um, well, we are now using the phrase the sponsors uh, or the sponsor. Is that in reference to the counselor sponsor, which in this case I believe is Pat, or is that in reference to the people that Pat was working with? So I think it would be both, and we should work on clarifying our language. Um, I think given our rec recommended rule change, we would go to the counselor sponsors, Joel, and say, hey, this is coming up at this meeting. Get who you want here, here. Um, or you come and all. Um, we can, you know, or proponents, I guess we could use as the non-counselor sponsor. We could say proponents and maybe be in touch with them too. And I can get in touch with the proponents to, to chat with them and loop Pat in as to when they think this is going to come so that we can have the final draft. I see a nod from Steve, Evan. Uh, George. Do the rest of you agree that, that just as a matter of course, um, 
if it's clear that what's being presented to us is simply not ready, that we just wouldn't even put it on the agenda. It's why it hadn't been on, but exactly. it was requested. Right, it was requested be, by someone. To, by the president to be put on, so it would be ah. have heard okay, because she's sorry. not sure when they want to hear it. And okay. so proactively to make sure GOL had seen it without any more delay, um, but yeah. Okay. So I, I, I can go back to the proponents and Pat and see if we can, we do have a meeting next one more meeting before a council meeting. Um, so I can, we, we might be able to still get them here on the 2nd of October. Yeah, George. I, our time is precious um, and it's increasingly under pressure. And it doesn't seem like we should be, um, uh, you know, uh, somehow what, at the mercy of other people's uh, schedules or agendas. Um, and as a courtesy, it would seem when you finally do want us to act on something, that you would have it in the form you want it to be in. And I understand how difficult that can be, and I have all the sympathy for that. But I think we as a body should just say, look, please don't bring us something until you uh, feel it's ready. And until it's ready, we're not going to uh, talk about it or discuss it. Um, no matter what anybody else <laughs> thinks. Um, is that too draconian? But I just, I'm trying to save our time. And so that normally if when, no matter whether it's the president or anybody else, you know, the policy would be that we're not looking at something until um, the, the people who are bringing it forward are, say it's ready. And at that point, we'll be happy to, to look at it and discuss it. But, um, uh, and I'm not thinking of this in particular, I'm applying this to any, yep. uh, anything that comes before us. Um, it needs to be um, ready. And if it's not, come so back some other time. I think it's in accordance with what the council expressed at the retreat. So I will, we will end this discussion, we'll move on and I'll connect with the correct people. So the official action comes. is we're going to postpone this. We're just going to postpone. Thank you. Yeah, Evan. So just that from a process perspective, I think probably, uh, this is unrelated to what George said, um, it makes, if, if we're setting the entry point to the council as a counselor sponsor, it seems like that counselor sponsor then also becomes the communication intermediary. So while you might have the contact information for the people we're now calling the proponents, to me it makes the most sense to go to Pat as the counselor sponsor and say, talk to the proponents. But it feels a little complicated if you're also talking to the proponents. So it seems like the counselor sponsor agrees to be the person who brings it to the council, shepherds it through the council, and also has the, the line of communication to the proponents. Um, so I, I guess I would probably encourage you to talk to Pat and not reach out to the people who she's working with and let her do that because she's taken on that responsibility by becoming the sponsor. Will do. Okay. So we will move on. We are now moving on to continued discussion and possible vote on a town council FAQ for the public relating to resolutions, proclamations, commemorations, and citations. And I believe George provided us a document for this. Um, this is the one titled resolutions, proclamations, citations, and commemorations, I think, with changes. George, you wanna talk about the changes? So everyone has the document in front of them. And um, the first change that uh, I made was to insert town council in all four of the uh, definitions, just for consistency's sake, and people should see if that sounds okay. So I thought the point was well made last time that, I mean, these were created as just definitions sort of in, out there in space. And this is really a very specific document for what the town council is doing 
So um, we inserted it for two, and I felt we should probably insert it for all. So that was the first change. Um, in item number two, how do I get something before the council? Um, actually, I don't think there were any changes that I recall. Please correct me if I'm missing something. But I think that was left as is. Um, item number three, uh, I was urged to try, or it was suggested we try and get clearer language as to um, what GOL wants sponsors to do. And so I just took the draconian course of just striking uh, that sentence basically and re just sim simply saying GOL strongly urges sponsors to be present when the committee conducts its formal review. But I didn't, I took out the language, you know, saying, well, this could delay, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't know if that meets the concerns of others, but I felt that, um, I felt the consensus was we really do want sponsors to be present, but they don't have to be present. Um, and it, it seemed not appropriate to make threats or sort of you know, suggest that, well, if you're not here, we're going to punish you. Um, if that language captures it, fine, but that was the second major change. And then the final thing that I did, as I recall, is simply insert or try to insert a, a, uh, a hyperlink to frequently asked questions. And uh, uh, I did, but I don't know if it works. <laughs> we'll find out when we accept all the changes. Exactly, right. Yeah. Um, is, it a, is it legal to embed an FAQ within an FAQ? <laughs> <laughs> Right, have to ask Borges, this would be a sort of frequently, frequently asked, right. So my one question is, given our yeah. just happened conversation about wording on proponents, sponsors, all of that, should in number three, GOL strongly encourages or urges proponents? I mean, that, that's all supporters almost. We, we I'd like to word sponsor only because a proponent could be anybody. Right. Could, you know, I could be a proponent of this Medicaid for all, meaning that I think it's a great idea personally, um, but I'm not a sponsor of it. Um, so uh, that's the only concern I have with that language. I'd like it to be clear from this to anyone reading it that we're talking to those that are actually bringing this forward um, and that we would really like them to be present. And, um, we're assuming that the counselor who's sponsoring it or counselors would be doing the same thing, that they would be urging the sponsors to be present. Um, and I agree there is this sort of ambiguity now between the council sponsor or sponsors and the people actually bringing it forward. And in some cases, it could be the same, same people. Um, so I don't know. Um, but proponent, I'm a little, that seems a little too broad. But Steve? about petitioner, because a sponsor is, I think, defined in two mm -hmm. as a counselor, but I would think, and then we have a whole bunch of other group petition, resident petition. I th so I think petitioner might be the right word. Petitioner, petitioner mm. and or sponsor. Mm. Well, main petitioner. Evan, oh, you had your hand up before I called on Steve, so. I, I, I think I like, I understand George's qualm with the word proponent. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, like, I like words to mean something. Mm -hmm. And so if we're gonna use the word sponsor, it should have a singular meaning that's understood within the context of this. Mm -hmm. And so we're calling the counselor sponsors, so I'd be wary of calling the residents who bring it to a counselor also sponsors. Mm -hmm. um, so perhaps Steve's language is, is best. I mean, it, it doesn't, I mean, yeah, I think, I think it, it, it's probably the best option. Yeah. Are we in agreement to change the word sponsors to petitioners in number three? So it would read, the last sentence would read, GOL strongly urges petitioners to be present when the committee conducts its formal review. The, the question becomes, as, as we saw with my error, on the last one, we have to get a good system in place for regularly notifying and figuring out how to notify when we're going to put it on our agenda. 
Um, and so that, that becomes an additional burden on us. Um, but but it's, it, it should be a good practice for us to get into the habit of making sure we reach out to someone. And in the past, we haven't even known who to reach out to. So the fact that there will be a counselor sponsor will hopefully make it easier because it will be an email from the chair to the counselor sponsor saying, hey, we're putting it on our agenda. Check in and see who wants to be present. You know, that makes it easier. We'll know who to contact. And I note the word petition does appear earlier in the uh, document because the second way mm. you can get something before us is a group petition because it could possibly be the case that no yeah. counselor wants to sponsor something but 150 voters disagree and then obviously we would be dealing with uh, the petitioners directly since there would be no council sponsor. Uh, Steve? Yeah, that, so that's why I had a petitioner and no sponsor because actually if a counselor sponsored it, then it automatically goes yeah. forward, doesn't it? That's the proposal that will yeah. be brought to the council, yeah. So we could say counselor, sponsor, or petitioners. Yeah, that's, that's what I would say. Also, minor thing is uh, under two, I think that second charter reference needs to specify 8.2A. B. You know, the second one. Oh, resident is A, yeah. Yes. Couldn't we just say? No, it is referring to the resident petition, so so that is 8.2A. 8, 8 yeah, so that's another change. Couldn't we just say uh, group them all under 8. I think it's nicer to. I think I think they need to be distinguished because we're saying if you yeah. submit the group petition, the council has to act. Yep. You can, and then if yep. you can't, if you can't get 150, or you don't want to get 150 people, and you can't find a council, you can do a resident petition, but no guarantees. Yep. Right. Oh, and and I did. I think I did make the change that it says purely at the discretion of the council president, and we should note that, because that either may be, that may be not the language you want or it may actually not be correct. But um, my understanding is that a resident petition of the nature that's mentioned here is strictly up to the council president. I mean, she controls the agenda. Right, exactly. So right. I would argue, so that's what yeah, I, thought. I think that's yeah, accurate. That's, Thanks okay. for pointing that one out, though. Okay, I should have caught it first, but yeah, I, I made that change, I believe, as well. Any other changes? Just asking if you are noting these in the document or should I have these I, in minutes? I have noted them by hand in this. Ouch, okay. Right, well, by, right. because I didn't have my mouse out. Okay. So right. <laughs> I've got a document that is noting both Thank of those you. changes I appreciate that. Thank um, you. for doing later. Um, and the next, if we've got no other recommended changes, this is an FAQ. Um, right now, it is a, just an FAQ, it's not from who. We can adopt it. Do we believe this needs to be forwarded on to the town council as a whole? Oh, Evan. Uh, George was going through his changes. I don't think we ever actually got to five and six. You just um, went through up to four. Oh. <laughs> and, um, I think five and six I'm sorry, I don't think there were any changes here. I think it's just a matter of discussion, I believe. Um, okay. I don't recall changes. Discussion, Evan? I have, I have opinions. Um, uh, five, I'm a little wary about saying usually it would be yeah. taken up at the next council meeting. That I think that's an expectation that we might not always be able to do. I like the idea of just saying it's the discretion of the town council president. Yep. So, so just uh, strike um, everything up to meeting, uh, to but, and just say agendas are set by the president of the council and the president may use their discretion in placing items on the agenda. Is that fair? So start with the, the sentence Se with agendas. Agendas, yeah. Everyone okay with that? Okay. So I'm, I've still got the recommendation for action as a concern um, because we don't recommend action we, for these things, these measures, we've been just declarations. Just right. 
well, it's not even a recommendation, it's just a declaring clear, consistent, actionable or not. So, Where do you see for, a this, so for the measure to the full council along with its declaration, period. Along with the recommendation. We don't recommend along though. We declare something clear, consistent and actionable or we declare it not clear that's, but that's, consistent. That's it's, a a, it's a declaration yeah. that we make so on these items. Along with, along with its vote. Well, you yeah. could just restate declaration that that it is clear, consistent, and actionable. You could just state that again. Uh, we could just say we'll forward the measure to the full council after its review. Along period. Its vote, That's true. Along with our votes. I, I actually like Steve's wording just along with its report, because the report will contain that declaration and, and discussion. I, I agree with I, declaration sounds strange. We've become very comfortable with using it, but to the public, no, it would be confusing might yeah. still to be the a public. weird term. But yeah. um, everything's in the report, so, it's so I don't think the public cares report. about a report either. But um, what they want to know is that um, after the formal review, GOL will forward the measure to the full council, um, along with its report. Period. Along yeah. with its report. Agendas are set by the president. Five. Okay. Okay. Does that work for number five now? So six. Six. Okay. Um, <laughs> as you can see, I did not change this. <laughs> so I, I heard uh, the concerns, and I think they're legitimate. Um, and uh, so I, you know, I still think, um, but I can be easily argued out of it that. Um, we should say something to the effect that we're the town council of Amherst and we're dealing with matters that uh, in some very broad sense bear um, on town affairs, town matters, or interest to its residents. It is a very broad, I don't know, maybe test isn't the right word, but uh, criterion maybe, I don't know. Um, and uh, again, it's making a somewhat, of, maybe the threat could be removed, but um, uh, that was the, the thinking behind it. And one thought I thought last time was we could just take it out. I would, oh. Steve? Yeah, so I would, we can reject a measure that has very direct bearing on the town of Amherst. So this, in a way, this is making a, sort of an assumption that we would reject it because it doesn't, I mean, that would be a, a reason for, but we can reject it something like that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I would tend to remove that second sentence and I'd also tend to remove everything after the next sentence after town council. So the town council can vote any way they want, whether or not they've seen the light of the, well, in other words, the town council could act contrary to, it, it sort of makes it sound like the town council, the GOL recommendation, which isn't a recommendation, will have shine a flashlight on the, the town council can vote for whatever reason they want in, in any way they want to and totally not even read the, our, our declaration. Yeah. Uh, should we just delete it completely? I, I, yeah, I would, I would tend to eliminate number six. George? Well, I think that's one solution, maybe the simplest <laughs> and most elegant. <laughs> um, and it, and um, I think the question, broadly speaking, is do you think this is a question that people might have that we could offer some kind of a light, shed some light on? And the answer may be, yes, they might have this question, but we really can't shed much light on it. Or it might be, it really isn't a free, is it a frequently asked, is this a question people might ask, you know? Um, so uh, this is about what we do. And Steve's point is, of course, we don't approve or vote this up and down. We just make a declaration. Yeah. So you could argue that it doesn't belong here because this is about us, our committee. That's not part of the process for getting it in front of the council. Right. And so you could argue it's not right. appropriate as a fact. Right. Um, right. Evan. So I'm struggling with this one. Um, so I'm reminded of why we're even doing all of this. And I think it started because a particular counselor wanted to ensure that there was some type of policy in place for resolutions, proclamations, commemorations, and citations 
to prevent ones that seem sort of absurd or inappropriate for us to act on uh, from actually wasting council time. And so to some extent, to ignore the fact that that's where this all started in the first place um, seems sort of like missing part of why we're doing this. Uh, then again, I think we addressed that through the requirement of a counselor sponsor, right? And so w the issue is addressed even if not explicitly stated, and so probably doesn't need to be there. Um, if we, w so I don't wanna keep six, but I do kind of like the overall sentiment. Uh, if we were to keep it, and I think I'd be fine deleting it, but if we were to keep it, um, I would probably want to try to shift it from the negative to the positive. And so instead of doing from why might the town council not act on it, um, something along the lines of what types of resolutions, uh, whatever, are the town council likely to take up and just say something like the, the council encourages them uh, to have some clear direct bearing on the town of Amherst so that there's some guidance of what we're looking for, but without necessarily the punitive aspect. I do, I, I will say, I, to me this document isn't just about GOL, um, because it has definitions of what they even are, and, and question two is really about how to get it in front of the council, so I, I don't think we're limiting this to, to just well, GOL. Well, that was gonna be what, what motion are we doing, is, is, and I'll come back to that. Would us taking the first sentence of number six um, maybe rewording it, but it is assumed that such measures have some direct bearing on the town of Amherst and or its residents and plopping it under number one after the four definitions, would that work? So you have after commemoration, then you have, it is assumed these measures or it is encouraged highly, the town council urges petitioners or I don't know what we do, but that these measures have some direct bearing on the town of Amherst and or its residents, or it is urged the, the, the not. And then that would allow us to get rid of six, but also put that in there as part of sort of definitions of here's what they are and we encourage these measures to, we could just say we encourage these measures to have some direct bearing on the town of Amherst and or its residents right under the definitions. George? I guess I'm a little nervous about putting that up top. Um, if it goes in at all, I prefer that it go a little bit farther down. Um, and I'm still struggling with whether it belongs here or not. Um, we're not the gatekeepers. No. Um, and I don't want to give that impression. And so um, putting it up top might suggest to someone looking at this somewhat cursively that somehow our job is to uh, make sure that things that don't meet some test don't get past us. And we really can't do that. Um, one attempt, as we said, is to have a sponsor from a council, and hopefully that will make this um, deal with that issue to some degree. But I don't want to give people the impression in the way we phrase this or present it that somehow our job is to uh, you know, keep certain things out. Um, so I'm a little nervous about putting it up top. And also maybe beginning to think maybe it just doesn't belong. Um, though I hear Evan point that this is a document that certainly is more than just DOL. And um, this is a question that it seems to me someone might readily ask. Um, maybe putting it in a more positive way, well, you know, what, what are the expectations of the council with these sorts of things? And the expectation is that they would have some direct bearing on the town and or its residents. So phrasing six in a positive way might be an argument for keeping it. Um, I prefer to keep it at the bottom um, rather than moving it up top. So where are we on consensus seven? 
So I, I'm just here to disagree with George today, I guess. <laughs> so, um, so the more we're talking about this, the more I actually like the idea of keeping the sentiment. Again, perhaps reframing it in the positive of what we're looking for versus what we're not going to act on. I, I actually kind of like the idea of putting it up on top because I think there's a flow where it's like if you're a person and you're sitting there and you're saying, I want to, I want to make a statement about nuclear war. And then you start at one and you say, well, so what is my statement even going to, like, what is it? Is it a resolution? Is it a proclamation? And one answers that. And then the next thing would be, okay, so is this resolution you have relevant? Is it something that we would actually look for? And if the answer is yes, then the second question they mm -hmm. ask is, okay, so how do I bring this to the council? And then, okay, well, when do I bring it to the council? And then, um, you know, then it says it goes to GOL. Well, what's GOL going to do with it? Mm -hmm. And then, well, what happens afterwards? And so there's a process. Mm -hmm there, whereas to say at the very, essentially this document walks them through the entire process of what it is to how it gets in front of the council to what hmm. the council does, and then six, to have it at the end to just say, what are we even looking for, feels like that's, we've already gone through all the steps, right? And so to some extent, I know you don't want to seem, make it seem like a, a gatekeeper situation, but I actually kind of think if, if, you're, if your thing is about, um, you know, the... Uh, an event happening in, in California. In California, you actually just shouldn't even read past one because pro probably shouldn't bring it forth anyway. So don't even worry about two through six because uh, chances are it's not relevant anyway. So are we ready to send this maybe back for another revisioning of number six before instead of trying to word word shop it here? Can, can we send it right. back? I, I can get you all the changes we did today, so we've got great. a clean Thank document you. and right. only looking at those changes then next next meeting. And move, um, move. Which is next week, yes. Um, do we think we can do that? Yeah. I, I can work on a word shopping if George, if you don't have time, or Evan, or Evan, yeah. does Evan have time in a week? Well, for six, I think that the word For no, just number six, for who's, number who's got six. more positive desires yeah. on that, that right. number? Um, <laughs> um, and it can be just getting me the changes and then I can put it into the document. So it would be something to the effect that, you know, in um, approving or whatever resolutions, proclamations, citations, and commemorations, what does the council, what is the council looking for? Or no, that's not right. Um, anyway, I guess there's, there's just going to be some thinking. I, I, maybe any suggestions people can give me. I'd be willing to try and okay. word, wordsmith it. I think everybody has a lot on their plate. Uh, I'd be willing to take it on, but I want to make sure that I capture the true spirit of six. So uh, Evan and I maybe can also touch base at some point. So but what we're going to do is assign it to George um, to come back with a revision. Anyone positive. who has suggestions, feel free to send to George. He has all ability to reject them and come up with his own options. Um, but but it's going to be to George. I will send George the new, what we've discussed today, so that you've got a clean version, so that the only track changes we'll be looking at is related to number six. Sound good? And we will put it back on the agenda for next week. Um, the next two items are related. They are revisions to the public ways policy to advise on flag raisings and commemorative flags, and then a potential resolution, because we were talking about restarting the commemorative flag flying with a clear town council adopted resolution. George, I think you were assigned to these two items. Did you have time to get to them in the last week? Okay. I'm sorry. I did not. Uh, do you think you'll have time uh, for agenda setting by next week? And where do we think our priorities are? This as a. Okay. Um, let me let me talk to you afterward, George, um, and see what we can do about this, Evan. So we have the the Puerto Rican flag up right now. Yes. But after this, it, February, it, it's Black I History think. Month, right? Uh, and the commemorative flag policy itself is just sort of ongoing. We right. were just thinking of a brand new reset on that. This, this, it we can have wait a, a couple bit of weeks. Time, I think. 
Do, do people feel that? Seeing George's face when you said that. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it, it, it just, I don't have a template where I'm working from, and what we have at the moment is a mix of history, anecdote, question, and, and some, some supposed facts that I'm not completely confident of, but probably are right. Um, and so it's not, we don't want to belabor today, but in my own mind, it's just not clear what form this is going to take. Do, do we want a history lesson in addition to, um, you know, uh, yeah. So uh, Mandy and I and, and will talk let, let me talk to George. I am given some upcoming announcements. Um, maybe I can take this this section back on. I did draft the original public ways policy, so maybe I can take these two on over the next couple months to come up with something um, and take some stuff off your plate. You've been doing a lot, George. Um, well, no, I don't mind doing it. I think, uh, so let's talk. And, yeah. And, because uh, uh, I don't mind taking this on, but I just need some kind of uh, model, template, or something to look at that, uh, or better guidance or clear mm -hmm. guidance from the committee as to what uh, they want. Do they want some history in here? Do they want uh, my little uh, description of the controversy over 9-11? Is that just, uh, is that not appropriate? Because um, what, what exists in the record is a kind of mishmash of, uh, you know, town manager pronouncements, um, select board uh, meeting notes, and lists of dates and, uh, you know, uh, flags and so on. It's, it's a mishmash. And um, maybe that's what the, co the policy will look like. It'll be all those things jumbled together, but at least they'll be in one place. Um, so I could just start with that. I could have three pieces to it, and then we could look at it as a committee. I, I don't mind doing it. Um, um, Did Steve, were you itching to say? Okay, I thought I heard, saw a hand from you, Steve. We'll, we'll, we'll chat, George. Um, and come up with something, but Evan makes a great point. We're looking more at like November, December to get this out to the council then. No, it's not pressing, so it's not as pressing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I mean what we could, I'm wondering if we could set like a time in our minds, like maybe by the November 20th GOL meeting. And so that gives George a couple months to wrap his head around and uh, George can reach out to whoever he wants to on this committee or off this committee independently, so we're not creating a subcommittee. Yes. Um, to, to, to put this together. Is that, a, do you think that's enough time, George? That's fine. Okay, that, that's a good suggestion. That brings us to um, number seven is work groups and ad hoc committees. I am, I'm looking at the time. Let, and then we've got a committee charge. Pat wanted to reopen that. She's not here, so we're not going to Probably, I'm, I'm just gonna postpone that today. Steve is leaving at noon, so um, we'll see what we get to. But um, let's do work groups and ad hoc committees. Um, we have, this is item seven. This is, item seven. Um, this is what, what is in front of us is what was proposed to the council. The council has had a first reading on it um, and since then, we have done a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and so we've got a document that has what we proposed to the council. The council had a first reading. I'm gonna pull up my notes from that first reading. Um, and that first reading was the 26th, I believe. Um, work groups. So, during that first reading, the discussion was very similar to the discussion I think we've had in this committee for months. Um, do we need them? Can we deal with them with ad hoc committees? Um, it's important to have non-counselors on these committees. Um, the current proposal is not compliant with the charter because it has someone other than the president appointing the committees. Um, uh, let's see. Um, one person mentioned that going back to sponsors to fix something that a c council committee or a council doesn't like is not necessarily as productive as asking new people in to talk about it, um, which was the, so instead of referring back to an original 
person who brought, say, something to us that it would be better to create a new group to discuss it. Um, there's a higher chance of a more diverse membership if a chair can pick who it is. Again, that goes back to attorney opinion. Um, with the group having a finite task, it makes a difference versus, I guess, an ad hoc committee. Um, someone said about appointments, since it's short term, it's okay not to open it up to the public as a whole. Um, there was an uncomfortability with designating specific people by name um, in any particular work group motion. Um, and so th that kind of summarizes what I have on here as the discussion that happened there. And so it is back with us. We have some changes we should make to make it comply with the charter. Um, but I think we also have an opportunity to potentially open this up for a new proposal. Um, we've seen since the time this went to the council, a lot of the concerns that we've discussed for months, we've now created two ad hoc, well, we've created one and amended another ad hoc committee. Sort of, they aren't named work groups because we don't have work groups, but the way they were created is in the spirit of work groups, of not having formal charges, not having um, you know, GOL review to have to go through it and all of that. And so I guess the question I'm bringing back here to this committee is before we bring our second set of changes to a second reading on work groups and ad hoc committees to the council, do we want to reevaluate our proposal for actual work groups and perhaps consolidate those two back into one based on all the conversations we've had, but also how the council seems to be acting as it creates ad hoc committees. Anyone care to George is on the verge. Well <coughs> I was a proponent for work groups for many of the reasons that people have presented. But there was a strong case made by others on this body and perhaps also in the council that that we don't need to create new entities and um, Mandy's just pointed out that, that we seem to be doing fine with just ad hoc committees. Um, or maybe that's not fair. She just points out that we have created ad hoc committees. She's not said necessarily we're doing fine with <laughs> um, But the point being that, that when we faced this challenge, we just created ad hoc committees. And some have been um, feeling like that's, you know, too cumbersome or too, I don't know what. But um, uh, I guess we're back to the question, you know, if we have a mechanism for achieving um, flexibility um, and being able to get people other than counselors on a, a body, um, and maybe that's the issue with ad hoc committees, basically, that they must be, they can only be council members, is that correct? Well, we modified the rule and proposed to change that way, but right. it wasn't originally proposed that way. That was what we as a GOL committee had deemed the difference between ad hoc right. committees exactly. and work groups. There's no charter requirement that that right. be the case, so right. that can certainly be changed. Right. So I guess what I'm asking, and people don't have to respond, but, but for those who felt that in a sense we already have enough, we have the mechanisms we need, we don't need to create another uh, mechanism, another body, whatever. Do they still feel that way? And um, if so, maybe we can try to craft something along those lines. Evan? I think my position has been clear yeah. for a while now. 
that we didn't need to create an entirely new category of committee to achieve what I think were some admirable goals behind the intent of work groups. Uh, I lost that battle in this committee and was ready to resign myself to accepting work groups having lost. And then something interesting happened is we did exactly what I said we could do, which was create an ad hoc committee via motion without a charge that included members of the public, which was both frustrating and vindicating at the same time. And so given that we have just created an ad hoc committee without a charge that follows all of the same criteria that was laid out in the recommended work group language and that includes members of the public, given that that ad hoc committee is already operating, I don't understand why now we have to go back and say we need a separate category and that that was just some weird thing that we did one time because we didn't have the, the work groups in place. If that's working, then I'm not quite sure why we need to create this separate thing. Um, I still have issue with ad hoc council committee rules uh, 10.4 saying um, that council charges to establish ad hoc committee shall specify the purpose of membership because with the exception of ad hoc rules of procedure, we have never had charges for ad hoc committees. And there was an argument before that that's because they were created before we had these rules. And yet, just at our last meeting, we sort of reconstituted the ad hoc goals committee without a charge, just via motion. And so, as far as I'm concerned, what, even though I voted for it, what we did at Monday night's meeting was in direct conflict with our rules because we created a new, we, we reconstituted an ad hoc committee without a charge. And so, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not buying the argument that we need this entirely separate rule given that we have just done what we want this rule to accomplish without having this rule in place. And so what I would like to do is take the current language we have for 10.5, strike the word work group everywhere we see it, replace it with ad hoc committee, and then delete our rule 10.4 for ad hoc committees. Um, because that's what we've been doing for ad hoc committees. So I, I'm going to take my privilege here. I, I think that's, that's sort of the place I'm at now. I'm not, I'm, I think 10.5 might need a little bit of work. Um, I don't think it's as simple as just find and replace and striking um, things like Right now, work groups require members of outside, outside. You know, so I, 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 but I think I am in the point of supporting an an ad hoc committee rule that looks more like the work group rule that we proposed than the ad hoc committee rule that is currently in the rules. Um, that that strikes the need for charges, but but says what the motion should show and should have how many members should be, you know, that, that takes all of that and sort of allows it to be done by motion. So I think I support sort of a combining of the two into one, calling them ad hoc committees and coming back with that proposal. Um, the, the parliamentarian portion of me says we didn't actually violate the rules because we moved to amend an uh, option previously adopted and it was adopted not in violation of the rules. Um, it, it required us it allowed us not to have to suspend the rules to make that motion um, versus multiple motions. But no, it, 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 is, it is recognizing that this council seems very okay with creating ad hoc committees that don't have charges. And our rules should reflect what we're doing so we don't have to worry about whether we need to vote to suspend the rules on a regular basis. Um, so that, that's where I am. I, I think we should assign someone to do that and bring something back if that's where this committee is at. So we're not doing it at the meeting where we're then looking at something next week, actual language, moving ourselves forward like that. Um, does that, if that's where people are now, I don't wanna send someone off to do that if it 
it's not really supported by this committee because I don't relish telling people to do work that then's going to come back and not not have a chance of being passed at the committee. So it would be good to know whether that's that sort of combining 10-4 and 10-5 ad hoc council committees and work groups into one rule is now the goal of this committee. I'm seeing a nod from Steve. George. I guess it, the devil's in the details. Um, what I'm hearing, I'm sympathetic to. Um, no formal charge, no GOL review. Do we also want to have some kind of time limit? Do we want to say, or is that again, that, that gets too specific? Um, we don't want these bodies to go on forever and ever. So work groups had a time limit in their rules, right, exactly. so we could you keep try that. To work that in. Yeah. So you, you basically, as you said, you're trying to take what you felt were um, the sort of good things about work groups that people liked, generally speaking, and craft or, or graft that language into um, the ad hoc committee rule. And then we would just, as Evan suggested, get rid of the work group rule. Um, I, I can, that I can, I'd certainly be willing to look at it and hopefully support it 100%. Anyone want to take that rewriting on? Evan? I would be more than happy <laughs> to do that. So, can I ask one question? Sure. Now? Uh, which is a feeling of the committee before I go out and do this. Um, one of the differences that hasn't been, I think, as discussed, and I would be curious to know sort of the feeling of this committee, um, is that ad hoc council committees, the current rule says the council, by which I interpret to be the full council, is the body that creates ad hoc committees. Uh, work groups, we said the town council or town council committee. Um, and so we, we opened the door to committees creating work groups. Um, would we also be opening the door to a council committee creating an ad hoc committee? That, that's, that's the one piece of this that I'm not quite, I have a very clear vision for everything else and that's the one piece of it that I'm not quite clear on. George. We're imagining a committee, I'm thinking of like CRC, but it could be any committee that wants to get working on something. But um, if we don't craft the language correctly, um, they can't until it goes before the full body and the full body decides that yes, they want that committee to have a ad hoc committee. Am I capturing the essence of this, um, or am I missing something? That, that in the, under the one view would be no ad hoc committee can be created by anybody without full council approval. And the other is um, a more flexible view, but maybe problematic, that no, we'd like it to be possible for uh, committees to um, form ad hoc committees without having to um, go through a whole series of steps, including going before the full council. Is that capturing it, or am I as often simplifying it a bit? That's, okay, that's, that's what I'm understanding it to be. And I, I don't know, I don't have a clear answer in my head. Um, I like the idea of committees having that flexibility, having that sort of autonomy not having to go through all kinds of steps just to sort of tackle an issue they want to tackle. But that means committees are all potentially creating all kinds of ad hoc committees that the council has no necessarily no knowledge of or approval of. They just go off and do it. So I've always been uncomfortable with that section anyway in work groups. Um, given the town attorney's opinion that the committee's membership need to be appointed by the president 
I think it helps the president if the full council talks about their goals for that committee and that the president's present for that discussion versus it happening separately siloed in a subcommittee of the council, say CRC or finance or something where the president's not even there and suddenly gets notified, oh, we just created a ad hoc committee and you need to appoint five members. And the president wasn't anywhere near in attendance for the reasons behind the creation and hearing from any of the counselors. I think it might actually add more work than just bringing, having that committee bring to the council the motion to create the ad hoc committee. It might create a one or two week delay, um, but then the counselors would be able to, and all counselors would know what the purpose is to be able to volunteer for it then. So I think given what the charter says, it's more logical to limit it to a council motion that doesn't prohibit a committee from bringing that motion to the council. And since we're envisioning that these uh, subcommittees could involve citizens and non-counselors, that seems to be another very good reason that the, uh, the full body be uh, uh, involved. So I think that makes sense to me. Does that help Does you? Does that help, Evan? Steve, do you have any thoughts? Okay, so we will put that on. Do you think you can be ready for that next meeting one week from today? Okay. Um, that puts us to, we're doing a lot of postponing today. <laughs> Agenda's not gonna get shorter next week. Um, that puts us to reopening the discussion of recommendations related to the GOL committee charge, um, particularly with revisions to permit GOL to consider policy related matters. Um, it is 10 of noon, the person who requested this be put on this agenda is not here. She will not be here next week either. Is this something we wanna continue discussing today or do we want to put this off as we get into at some point in November, um, we're going to be looking at all the committee charges of standing committees. And is this, instead of looking at this siloed at this point, should we look at it as a larger picture, five standing committees? What are our recommendations? So I'd like to hear thoughts on that before we get into a discussion now. <laughs> George? I certainly don't see any reason to have it on the agenda for next meeting. Um, and since the person who brought it was particularly interested in it is not even here and won't be here next time. Um, and I don't have any strong feelings at the moment and um, about it and uh, I think it's really going to reflect our experience of this first year and a kind of revi revisiting and rethinking of the whole committee structure and how it's worked and how it hasn't. So I guess my feeling would be to just take this off the agenda, at least for the, the near term, and perhaps have it reappear at some future date in November. Any other thoughts, Evan? So I, I agree with George. I like the idea of um, having that discussion as part of a larger discussion of the council committee structure because I think George is right. It'll reflect sort of a more holistic approach to our committees and also um, will reflect our, our experiences over a longer period of time. That said, uh, our, we do have a revised charge that we have recommended to the council, that we presented to the council, that we didn't really get pushback on, with the exception of the fact that I think our revised charge at the time had exempted proclamations. And, we've since revised and that we've revised since revised charge. That revised. Yeah. Uh, given that, in I, I assume two council meetings we will have in place 
a policy on resolutions, proclamations, commemorations, and citations once we have our second reading and vote on our revisions to Rule 8 whatever. Um, I, I would say that I, I don't want to wait to have that bigger discussion about our charge to put mm -hmm. our revised, revised charge back in front of the council so that the president doesn't have to keep using eight point whatever to refer resolutions and proclamations to us. It can be an, it would be an automatic referral. Um, but it doesn't, to me it doesn't make sense to pass rule, our revision to rule eight that makes resolutions and proclamations a referral and still have a charge that says we only review bylaws and rev resolutions. And so I think that those need to be paired. So I think that we need to put forth to the council an updated charge that at least it, it, that at least uh, conforms with what our revisions are to the rule. Does that make sense? No, that makes complete sense. And rule eight was up for the council last this past week and got postponed. So I can talk to the president and say we we are ready to bring that charge forward. It just hasn't been on a high priority list. I can go back to her and say we think they they need paired. And so when rule eight comes in we have a revised charge we're ready to bring. It is not part of the sort of full on annual discussion revised charge. It's, it's specific to these things. Um, if that's agreement of the committee, that's what I'll do and then we'll postpone the, the discussion about our other more substantive changes to the charge to a time when we're discussing all of the council committee stand, standing committee charges where we can have a more comprehensive discussion. Does that sound good to everyone? I'm seeing nods. Yeah. So that's what we will do. Um, that puts us to public comment. And I don't see any public comment. So there is no public here to comment. Um, so we are done with that. We have some minutes to adopt. Um, September 4 and September 11 minutes. Are there any changes? I'm not seeing any. Do I hear a motion to adopt the September 4th, 2019 and September 11th, 2019 GOL minutes as presented? I so move. Uh, and Steve, is that a second? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. That is 4 0. Um, which brings us to items not anticipated by the chair. We're chugging along on this meeting when we just post every, postpone everything to the next meeting. We get done. It, it lengthens the next agendas, Thanks, but, but we get this done early. <laughs> so um, I have something that is an item not anticipated. Um, there is a council rule that a chair cannot be a chair of two standing committees. And this morning, um, CRC saw fit to nominate and elect me chair of the Community Resources Committee. I first, even though this is not the CRC committee, I wanna thank Steve for his work as chairing that committee since he sits on this one too. Um, but that requires me to resign as chair of GOL because not only do the rules prohibit it, there is no way I want to be chair and have all the work of two separate standing committees. Um, so I wanted to make that announcement today. I will put on next month, next Wednesday's agenda as the first order of business electing a new chair of this committee um, and then intend for that new chair to take over the running of the meeting once elected, um, unless we can talk now since it's unanticipated whether it would be preferred that the election happen at the end of the next meeting instead of the beginning so that 
I, I, I don't want to remain chair too long of two committees. Um, so I want it to happen at the next meeting, but given that it is one week away instead of two weeks away, um, I would be willing to run the whole meeting before we elect a new chair. But thoughts, Steve? So who's even eligible? So you're, so you're chair of another committee. So Evan chairs OCA right now. Um, Pat chairs audit. <laughs> and Jen George seems to be slinking under the table right now. Um, yeah, so, so there are not too many people eligible. Um, Pat has indicated if we're willing to elect a chair today, we could do that today. She would not have a problem with us going through with an election. I think it's better to happen on an agenda as a posted agenda item. So I don't want it to happen until it's been posted to be happening. Um, we can do it at the end of the meeting so that it's easier for whoever is elected chair to have a clean start without having to suddenly take over the running of a meeting mid-meeting um, on an agenda that that person did not create. Okay. Steve? So I should make it clear I am not interested or able to <laughs> be chair of this for the same reasons I'm not chair yeah. of the CRC. So. Hi, George. <laughs> so, so I nominate George by acclamation. Yeah, we're still going to wait till next meeting. <laughs> you don't have to, though, right? Yeah. Um, in, she has indicated she does not desire to do that. Yeah, but I haven't spoken to her yet, and I have a group of people <laughs> that we're going to, you know, visit her house. <laughs> still, I'm going to nominate. I'm going to nominate George. So. I, I'm willing to take this on. I do not. Obviously, no one looks forward to this kind of uh, task for any committee. It's, no, it's it's it's, it's clearly an enormous amount of work, and we've been very well served both in OCA and in GOL. So I have excellent models, um, but observing these models, one feels <laughs> highly inadequate. Um, but nonetheless, um, we have to move forward. So. So. Do we, I, I mean, I, I don't think I heard a second, but I, as chair, my preference would be not to elect till next meeting simply because I think it should be an agenda item. But if the preference of the committee is to elect now for then the new chair to take over next meeting at the beginning and all the agenda setting this week, I'm okay, or, or given what we've kind of stated even without an election, I'm okay working with potential incoming chair to make that transition as smooth as possible and as swiftly as possible, but without overwhelming anyone. So taken Steve. literally, the rule says you can't be chair of two committees. So right. you're currently chair of the CRC as of 1030. So, <laughs> yes. So I would be, if there's a second, I'd prefer to dispense of this today. Evan. I think I see some value in having it as a posted agenda item if there's the potential for an actual election. But given that three of the five members are ineligible and a fourth member is withdrawing himself from consideration, uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem like doing it now versus another meeting does any anything. And I think that it gives um, our incoming chair. <laughs> Unless he withdraws from consideration, and then who knows what happens. But but I think that. Um, Suspend the rules. We can do that. We could. But I and actually I, what I was going to say is I'd be I'd be comfortable doing it now, but I also would want to hear from George. You have two minutes. I mean, there's the idea of just throwing someone in the deep end and seeing what happens. Um, and sometimes people drown, but usually they survive. Um, I, I, what I'm hearing, I will abide by the, the decision of the group. If the three of you um, want to move ahead, I won't uh, resist it or, or, or speak against it. But um, what you're envisioning is then whoever is elected, hypothetically uh, the new chair, 
would be running the meeting from the get-go. Um, and as Steve points out, you really can't have, technically speaking, uh, two chairs. Someone can't be chair of two committees at the same time, and that's really what would be the case next week, technically speaking. Um, so uh, perhaps we should just go ahead. Um, I, I, I'm, I knowing Mandy Jo, I'm sure she will assist me in every way she possibly can, um, and I will certainly be begging for that assistance. Um, but perhaps we should just go ahead and do this and uh, let Mandy now focus. I mean, she will now be chair of CRC, as she is chair of CRC, so it's probably appropriate that she step down um, and, she, uh, and that we elect a new chair. The one other option that I am loath to put out there is the fact that if if George feels that he is not ready or doesn't want to chair a meeting a week from now, you could leave and I could, as vice chair, run the next meeting and to give you some time, but also to, to, to comply with the rules, but to give you some time uh, to sort of get the hang of it, I, I wouldn't be thrilled about doing it, but I would do it if you feel uncomfortable. I think we should just go ahead and do it. Um, and I, I know you will be uh, forbearing, and the main thing is that, that I not miss something that needs to be done, but um, uh, I think uh, we should probably just go ahead and do this. And uh, hopefully, between the two of you, um, with your support, we'll, we'll manage. So it sounds like, do I hear a nomination for George? A nomination so for a new chair? It needs to be two parts, right? So one, do you need to repeat I, or no? I, I think my announcement was sort of my okay. resignation. Um, so it's just when, so if, we're, if we're comfortable doing it now, do I will to, announce I that I am resigning as of the adjournment of this yeah. meeting. So then. I nominate George by acclamation. Is that a thing? Can you do by acclamation? I nominate George. Second. Chair. So we knew it's a guaranteed tie. And, and I heard a second by Evan on that. Do you accept the nomination, George? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? We got three, all those against, <laughs> all those abstaining, and one abstention. Congratulations, yeah, George. And, uh, you are now the chair of GOL. Following on Mandy Joe's graciousness, I'd like to thank her for her amazing Absolutely. job. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Chairing, getting this committee going, and also for taking on the, the CRC. Thank you. That's a high bar. There is. Are there any other items not anticipated? Seeing none, we is will. <laughs> We're, when we bring up all committee, when George puts on the agenda all committees later on this year, <laughs> and you, can, you can bring that one up as a possibility. I have seen that. We are adjourned. I'm just declaring us adjourned at 12.05 p.m. Thank you all for your work. It's been a pleasure chairing this one.